<clears throat> oh, this is gonna be a shit show. Hello everyone, my name is Navari, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to go through Stone Core. I am going to be DPSing, so some things will be out of my control. But I will show you, from a DPS perspective, what you should be doing. You know, hopefully my DPS also do those, like the priest I have and the uh, hunter I have, but we'll see. So, on these trash poles, you're going to want to interrupt that. It's called Force of Earth. What Force of Earth does is transforms that stone shaper into a very nasty elemental. And it's kind of a pain for your tank to deal with and your healers to deal with. So, you can do them all a favor and interrupt it. As a DPS, you literally have no other job than to do your party favors like this. So, you really can't be complaining about having to interrupt spells. We have a Shadow Priest. Shadow Priest, Survival Hunter, Unholy DK. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is that an unholy? No. He has Bone Shield. Why is it saying he's unholy? See, so yeah, as you see, Force of Earth charges up. I wanted to see if any of them would be, um, would be interrupting, and they did. As a DPS, if you get feared, um, if you have a cooldown to prevent it, you should use it. Because fears can oftentimes lead you into some shenanigans that you don't necessarily want to be in. Yeah, he's definitely blood. He just, he has heart strike on his, uh, damage. But yeah, uh, as a warrior, you have access to Berserker Rage. You should kind of always keep that on your bar, um, in case it needs to be used. There's another Earth Shaper here. There's only ever one of these per pull, at least in normal. I believe on heroic you get two, but I know on normal you only get the one, so. All right, now it's time to fight Millhouse. All right, and on the pull for Millhouse, you will see that he gets immediately killed and you have to fight this big old rockworm. The rockworm really only has a few mechanics. Um, Really, only things you have to worry about are when it does Crystal Rain. I don't know what it's actually called. Dampening Wave, there's nothing you can do about. Um, that is what you need to worry about right there. And then you see right here it says Next Submerge. So he will go underground, and you will have to stay out of the way of the little dust tornadoes that he does. You'll see that in a second. You'll see a bunch of rock borers spawn, but you see these these puffs of smoke. You gotta stay out of that, or he will uh, knock you around and deal a fair bit of damage. On Heroic, it is much more damage. <laughs> I was just waiting on Mortal Strike. Oh. He'll be emerging in one second. There he is. He also should be dying soon. Fantastic. Down he goes. Uh, that is not something for me, I don't think. Yeah, no. It's not really for me. That's more of a rogue thing. And then on to this trash. This trash actually has a really fun mechanic that is never used anywhere else, really. Um, so these crystal spawn giants will use an ability called Quake. And Quake has a precast, and then it will actually uh, land. See that? And if you jump, you don't take damage. If you don't jump, you take damage. That it, It's sincerely what it is, and it's actually really cool. And I like that a lot. I think it's really neat. Um, my tank might not pull these flares, but regardless, I should probably explain uh, what they do. They legitimately have an ability called Flay. Oh, well, you're going to see it here anyway. And as you see, Flay deals a fair bit of damage. I didn't jump, and I'm eating Flays from many different directions. 
why I don't like pulling multiple of those, but that's fine. Kind of my fault. If you can, as a, as a ranged, it's very easy not to be hit by the fly. As a melee, it is just a little bit harder. Um, heavy geode mace. Interesting. Oh, it's agility. I do need that. Absolutely needing on that. Fantastic. I'm also very opposed to needing on BOEs unless you are going to use them. I will never need on a BOE I'm not going to use. So when you're walking this path, as you can see, there are little spikes falling. You gotta avoid those spikes. Slab hide. Uh, drops a mount. Pretty fun fight. Uh, see, it says next air phase. He's gonna go in the air and drop uh, spikes. As you're about to see. So while he's in the air, he will do what happened on that hallway and just drop a bunch of spikes. Don't get hit by them. They hurt. Your healer will be mad. Again, as a DPS, you have like one job. That's it. That's, that's the fight if you're a DPS. Don't stand in the fire. Dodge the spikes. There's nothing really for you to interrupt. Uh, unfortunately, he has pulled it into a bit of a precarious position. I'm not standing in it, though, thankfully. Now a minute. Whenever you're DPSing a dragon, you generally speaking want to try to DPS it from the side. But... Sometimes it just cannot be helped. Um, those are amazing gloves for me, so we'll be taking those. Unless the other DK needs on them as well, which they might. Hey, got the roll. Fantastic. It's the last of my ICC gear gun, I think. Nope, I do still have a neck. Hunter is doing what he's supposed to, putting misdirect on the tank. Very smart. This next part is not really up to you if you are a melee DPS. You kind of just have to go with the flow, unfortunately. Um, but this next part, you'll see this guy right here. He is a stone core sentry. If he is left unkilled and he detects your party, he will go and alert a group. And that group will pull to you. He didn't detect the party this time, which is good. But as you can see, we pulled one. He did the uh, shout call out. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to silence him on next cast so that he can come this way. You want to interrupt demon portal if you can. As you can see, another uh, sentry is right there. Made the call to let us know that it saw us, but didn't actually go to get anyone, so it's fine. None of us can really go loot that body. Unfortunate. We move on. You see there's two sentries here. This sentry will always path up this way. This sentry will always go side to side. Having a DK, super useful. Having a rogue, super useful for this dungeon. Um, DKs can death grip them and then just have them killed by the party. Rogues can sap them, which is very, very nice. Theoretically, a hunter could also throw a freeze trap, but it's unlikely. Right now, the stone core bruisers are bugged. Um, so they will do this thing where they knock you up an absolute bunch. He's only supposed to knock up once, like he did there, but he, he did it again. And he should do it a third time. There it is. He didn't. He's only supposed to do it once. At least from my recollection, he's only supposed to do it once. But I've had times where he's done it anywhere between three and five times. We got lucky that time and he only did it twice. But I've had times where we've been an all-melee all DPS group and we've just, we've just been trampled by the man.
Also, some of you may notice I'm always using this cooldown and this cooldown together. The reason behind that is it is just significantly more DPS. As you can see, no one else was interrupting that demon portal, so demons were spawning, and if they are left unhandled, they can be a bit of a problem. Really up to the tank what he wants to do here. Oh, no, is he gonna... Oh, he's gonna... Yep. Really, really don't like this idea. I don't like this idea just because these guys being bugged right now. Yeah, well, this is a bit of a problem. And that's why I don't like this kind of pull. Alright. Uh, this boss has different things to worry about if you are melee or ranged as a um, melee. one of He will switch between two different types of bulwark. One has a chance to spell reflect. The other will cause bleed on melee strikes. Can't remember which is named which. Elementium bulwark is 20% chance to reflect spells. And Elementium spike shields... Uh, applies a dot to all melee. As you can see, I have a stacked dot. Shatter, you're always going to want to step out of that. Um, there are very few things that can tank it. If you are a death knight, use your anti-magic shell. If you are a uh, paladin, you can... Um, I forget what the name of the cooldown is, but there is a cooldown you can use. Um, oh god, I'm going to get hit by this one. I didn't. Yes, sir. Um, I forgot what the name of the cooldown is for paladins, but paladins do have a cooldown which will allow them to eat it. Uh, I'm actually good on this sword. I already have it. So I can just greet on that. Watch me still get it over this death knight. I feel so bad for this death knight. Hey, didn't get it. So this room, there's generally nothing to really worry about. It's just a very quick AoE room. None of these are elites. You can just AoE these guys down real quick. Um, if your tank's feeling spicy, you can pull the flares. And no matter what, he's going to have to pull that bruiser. But it's just quick trash to get rid of. Um, and then we're on to the final boss. I pulled before the tank because I am an absolute asshole. Don't be like me when it comes to that. I have a tendency of doing that. If I know that a tank is going to be pulling, I will preemptively charge and Colossus smash. It's a very bad habit to be in, and I recommend no one else get in that habit, because I am going to piss my raid tank off so much when it is time for us to raid, and I do that. As you can see, another big ol' AoE pull right here. Tank should honestly just go in and uh, just do that. Just drop a death and decay. Uh, next, the boss gets pulled. So this boss is really where you can tell the difference between if you're a good DPS or if you are just an idiot. If you're a good DPS, you will interrupt when you're supposed to. If you are not a good DPS, you won't. That is what you have to interrupt. That thing called force grip. And you also don't want to stand in the gravity wells. Me and the DK interrupted at the same time there. Alright, we're in phase two. During phase two, um, she will get a couple of meteors and get ready to throw them at you. Uh, if I see the target on the ground, I will point it out. There it is. And one meteor will be striking there. Next meteor will be striking there. It's very obvious and you have a fair bit of time to move. If you get hit by that, that's pretty much on you. There's really no excuse to be hit by it other than, you know, you're a little clueless. And that's fine. 
there's a gravity well, but we should be able to kill in time, and we did. And that's a very, very simple and easy guide to stone core. But yeah, very easy and simple guide to stone core. I would like to thank you all for watching. I believe I'm on a flight path right now. I am. I would like to thank you all for watching, and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.